Uh, we know that there are certain mental dispositions that can produce uh, uh, an impact uh, on gene expression. Some of those uh, expression changes can persist throughout the entire life of an organism. We know that psychosocial factors, for example, play a very significant role in modulating the course of certain physical illnesses like cardiovascular disease, asthma. These are disorders that are major public health concerns. If the environment, the psychosocial environment, can modulate these disorders, presumably information from the environment is getting in and getting under the skin and changing the brain in ways which have impact on the body. By working out the mechanisms through which the brain communicates with the body, we can begin to put the mind back into medicine in a way which will offer potentially new targets of interventions, which is precisely one of the important strategies that we're pursuing with disorders, for example, like asthma. And one of the ones that we've been very interested in, in particular, is the possibility that we can, through mental exercise, voluntarily enhance compassion. And what we did is illustrated here in a very um, simple cartoon of the experimental protocol um, where we had practitioners alternate periods where they were just in a neutral state and periods during which they are meditating cultivating compassion, and they were doing this in short periods of time. And uh, during these neutral and meditation periods, we challenged their meditation states, and I won't play these for you, but we presented auditory stimuli that were very, very loud, um, and uh, uh, in one case, they were strongly um, negative emotional stimuli that were signs uh, auditory signs of human suffering. They were cries and screams uh, that were very pronounced. Uh, and you can think of this, you know, when you go to a cardiologist, you might sometimes be given a cardiac stress test where you're challenged on a treadmill. Well, this is a brain stress test, if you will, um, but specifically looking at how practitioners respond to stimuli that depict human suffering when they're either in a neutral state or in this state where they're generating compassion voluntarily. So we've been interested in what brain circuits are recruited when these long-term practitioners voluntarily generate compassion. And I should mention that we compare these to age match controls where we've taught them the same practice. Uh, and actually, Mathieu Ricard developed a training regime that we can offer to novice practitioners who wish to learn the practice. And these are individuals who are interested in meditating, had never done it before, and um, they practiced for one week prior to coming into the laboratory. This is a busy slide, and I'll only walk you through part of it, but one of the brain regions, which is um, strongly modulated by this meditation practice is a very interesting part of the brain. Um, and it's called the insula, and specifically the anterior insula, which is shown in this axial image here. The insula is a region of cortex that is the a part of the brain that is the only part of the brain to contain a viscerotopic map of the body. And what that means is that the visceral organs are actually mapped like, um, like retinotopy, like the eye is mapped in the visual cortex. The visceral organs are mapped uh, in the insula. Uh, so this is a region of the brain through which information from the body is conveyed to other circuits in the brain. And it's also a part of the brain that has descending pathways to 
these different visceral organs and can um, modulate activity in those organs. And what we find is that in the long-term practitioners, they're the ones in red down here, the solid lines are during meditation, the dotted lines are during neutral, the blue lines are the novice practitioners. And what you can see is these are the responses using functional MRI that we detect in the insula when the long-term practitioners are exposed to these negative emotional sounds. And what you can see is a big difference between the dotted line and the solid line in red uh, for the long-term practitioners. It indicates that activity in their insula is being strongly modulated by their meditation practice, whereas in the novices, there's really no difference between the neutral and the meditation periods. Um, and it suggests that the insula is an important piece of the story in terms of how the brain is changed in response to compassion training. 